Hello everybody and welcome to Theology 101. Today we are going to talk about how Christians believe that God is both one and three. The theological term for this concept is called the Trinity. The Trinity is the Christian doctrine that describes the nature of God. This doctrine says that there is only one God, but this one God eternally exists in three distinct persons. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, and the Father is not the Spirit. They remain three distinct persons, but together are one God. Now I know this is very confusing, so let's begin looking at why this doctrine even developed in Christian history. This doctrine developed in the early church as a reaction to the heretical teaching called Arianism. Arianism taught that Jesus was divine, but that he was a lesser God than the Father. The reason why Arianism makes this distinction is in order to preserve monotheism. And proponents of Arianism believe that if Jesus is fully God just as the Father, then this belief will undermine monotheism. But in response to Arianism, the early church formed the Nicene Creed in 325 AD, and they declared the doctrine of the Trinity as foundational to the Christian faith. And they also declared that Arianism will be considered a heresy, because Jesus is not a lesser God than the Father, but is fully God just as the Father. So the conclusion from the early church is that all three persons of the Trinity are eternal eternal, uncreated, and identical in essence. Now why did the early church emphasize that the three persons of the Trinity are identical in nature yet remain distinct as persons. They did this in order to preserve monotheism. Christianity is built on the belief that there is only one God. If you look at the Old Testament, the foundational belief of the Jewish faith was that they believed in one God while many of the cultures were polytheistic meaning that they believed in many gods. This is why God commanded Israel to recite the Shema continually. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. But monotheism was not only a Jewish belief, this belief continued in the Christian faith. Look at how the Apostle Paul contrasts the Christian faith with the idols of his culture. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we exist through him. So we see clear passages where monotheism is taught both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yet there are passages that seem to indicate that there are more than one persons involved when we talk about this one God. For example, in the creation account when God creates Adam, look at what he says. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, some people argue that God is speaking to his angels, which is why he uses the word us and our. But notice that God said, let us make man in our image. Humans were not created in the image of angels. We were created in the image of God. And so when God says, let us make man in our image, he is indicating that there is more than one person involved with creating mankind. Later, as the Old Testament unfolds, we see a specific person namely the angel of the Lord who identifies himself as God several times. The angel of the Lord appears to Hagar after she runs away from Sarah, Abraham's wife. The angel of the Lord speaks with Hagar and tells her to return to Sarah. And in order to assure her that everything will be okay, he says this, The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. Notice the pronoun the angel of the Lord uses. He did not say God will multiply her offspring, but he says, I will multiply your offspring. He is not speaking as an angel or a messenger of God. He is speaking as God himself in this context. In fact, notice how Hagar responds to the angel of the Lord later on. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing, for she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. This same angel of the Lord appears to Moses as a burning bush, and he identifies himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so we see that there are more than one persons involved when talking about God in the Old Testament. We see this even more explicitly when we get to the New Testament. Specifically, we see three distinct persons all identified as God. God the Father is called God by the Apostle Paul. There is one body and one spirit, just as also you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all 
and in all. And then we see that Jesus is also identified as God by the Apostle John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Finally, we see that the Holy Spirit is identified as God by the Apostle Peter when he confronts Ananias and Sapphira for lying about their offering. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Notice that Peter says that by lying to the Holy Spirit, he is lying to God. So Christians believe in one God because it is a monotheistic religion. However, Christians also believe that this one God exists in three distinct persons. Now, some people try to reconcile this tension between God being one and three persons by arguing that God is just one person, but he expresses himself in three different ways. Sometimes God appears as a father, or sometimes he appears as a son, or sometimes he appears as a Holy Spirit. It's as if God puts on different masks and plays a different role at different times. But this view is called modalism and is considered a heretical teaching. The Trinity teaches that God is not one person who expresses himself in three different ways or three different modes. Instead, the Trinity teaches that God is one but exists eternally as three distinct persons. And the reason why modalism doesn't work is that there are passages that show all three persons of the Trinity appearing at the same time. One example is when Jesus gets baptized. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. In this one scene, you see Jesus being baptized. You see the Holy Spirit descend in the form of a dove. And you see the Father speaking, saying that he is well pleased with Jesus. This scene would be impossible if modalism was true. Instead, we see the Trinity at work. Three distinct persons appearing at the same time. So the doctrine of the Trinity teaches that God is one, but exists eternally in three distinct persons. He is not one person who reveals himself as a father sometimes, or the son sometimes, or the Holy Spirit sometimes. God is one in essence, but three distinct persons. Now I know this teaching is very confusing still, which is why in the next video, I'm going to provide a framework by which we can understand the Trinity properly. So please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified when the next video is released. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with a friend. And until next time, see you.